and hello, Verge Electrify community. My name is Shauna Rappaport. I am the Senior Vice President and Executive Director of our Verge event. And when it comes to industrial emissions, there is really no one else with whom I would rather get to have a quick demystifying conversation than Jane Flegel, the White House's newly appointed Senior Director of Industrial Emissions. Welcome, Jane. Thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. So the term industrial emissions seems to be surfacing with, with increased frequency in the news, in my inbox, at our Verge events, and for very good reason. They represent nearly a third of global emissions, and yet the conversation and the solutions are still somewhat nascent. There's a lot here to demystify. And that is why we're so honored to have you with us, Jane, uh, to answer some somewhat basic but really essential questions, a 101 on industrial decarbonization, if you will. So we have three questions for you and we're gonna dive right in. Question one, starting with the basics. What exactly is industrial electrification? It's a great question. I think it's really easy to lose meaning when we talk about climate action generally in these big abstract sectoral buckets. So I think it's worth taking a minute to appreciate just how truly amazing the industrial sector is. When we say industry, what we're talking about is manufacturing, construction, waste processing. The industrial sector produces all of the physical stuff that underpins modern life. Industrial electrification is one of several pathways for achieving industrial decarbonization, especially as electricity itself increasingly comes from low carbon sources. And I think it's worth noting that we actually use electricity for lots of important industrial activities, especially for motion and machines. In fact, that's one of the things that drove the industrial revolution. So when we're talking about industrial electrification today, we are often talking about powering a wide range of industrial processes, especially heat with clean electricity. We have to find ways to do things like melt metals and produce steam without emitting greenhouse gases. The climate benefits are or should be pretty obvious, but I wanna point out that electrification of industry is important for reasons well beyond reducing carbon pollution too. It can improve the productivity of our factories, enhance the quality of our manufactured goods, reduce other kinds of pollution and waste and bolster the competitiveness of domestic industries. Um, and moving forward, direct electrification is likely to be especially important for providing low to mid temperature heat, powering machines and enabling fuel switching. But there's also a lot of really exciting innovation happening in industrial electrification in other areas too, like indirect electrification where we use clean electricity to produce hydrogen, which is then used by industry, or electrolyzing iron ore directly to produce steel. So the bottom line is that industrial electrification has a critical role to play, not only in getting rid of carbon pollution, but in enhancing the competitiveness of US manufacturing while cleaning up the air and water for communities that live near these facilities. Talk about a summary in like three minutes. You nailed that. I want to go back. I want to go back to impact for um, for question number two and to talk a little bit more about why this is so important. Maybe maybe you can go a little deeper into some of the things you just brought up, both in terms of of the problems and in in terms of the potential. Yeah, this is my favorite question. So thanks for asking it. Um, industry is so important for so many things, including but not limited to the transition to an equitable clean energy economy. And as you said earlier, it really does not get the attention that it deserves, although I'm happy to say that I think this is changing. Um, first of all, we know that a strong and resilient manufacturing sector is so critical to a healthy economy that provides high quality jobs and importantly, pathways to the middle class. And then if the last year has taught us anything, it's that the security and resilience of our supply chains is critical. Now is the time to reinvest in America's manufacturing to ensure that we can make the products that underpin the clean energy economy here and in a way that creates economic opportunity for real communities. And then lastly, and perhaps most relevantly for um, this particular conversation, we know that the clean energy transition, which is already well underway, is gonna require a lot of stuff. Offshore wind, electric vehicles, clean buildings, these are all things that are made of materials like steel and cement. 
And so as we build the clean and resilient infrastructure of the future, we have an opportunity to build it with clean American made products. So in that way, the energy transition itself is um, a huge opportunity to revitalize clean manufacturing. All of that said, at the moment, industry, as you already noted, is a major contributor to climate pollution. In fact, industry is on track to be the biggest emitting sector in the United States within this decade. Direct industrial emissions account for about a quarter of all greenhouse gases. But as you said earlier, if you add the emissions from generating electricity used, used by those facilities, industrial emissions account for one third of all greenhouse gas emissions globally. And importantly, these emissions are rising at twice the rate of overall greenhouse gas emissions. So industrial decarbonization and electrification in particular is important for the health of our economy, our communities, and our planet. That is a perfect transition into our final few minutes and final question for you, Jane, which is, which is progress and specifically, where do we go from here? Yeah, well, I'm so excited to have had the opportunity to join the Biden-Harris administration, which is in this area, like every other area, truly taking a whole of government approach to addressing industrial emissions. That means investing in enabling infrastructure for industrial decarbonization, like transmission and boosting clean power. Because really importantly, without clean electrons that can actually move to factories, industrial electrification won't yield the societal benefits we want to see. It also means supporting research and development and the demonstration of industrial decarbonization technologies, everything from direct electrification to carbon capture to clean hydrogen. And we're pursuing all of this while ensuring, and this is really important, that overburdened communities are protected from increases in cumulative pollution. Importantly, we're also investing in diverse and unionized workforces, bolstering training programs, particularly at minority serving institutions, investing in regional manufacturing initiatives, increasing access to capital for domestic manufacturers, and pursuing smart and effective trade policies. And we also know how important it is to not just have supply side investments in industrial decarbonization and modernization, but demand signs, demand signals as well. And that's why we're um, looking to create strong early demand for low carbon materials and products. One important tool here is public procurement, which we can use to create markets for these products. Some of this is already being pursued by the administration with existing programs and authorities, including authorizations in the Energy Act of 2020, which passed on a bipartisan basis at the end of last year. But, and I think this is really critical to say, this is really just the tip of the iceberg. The American Jobs Plan would fundamentally transform our ability to tackle these issues head on. The Jobs Plan includes historic investments to accelerate industrial decarbonization while investing in a more competitive and resilient domestic manufacturing base. This includes investments to secure supply chains, support regional manufacturers, procurement, as I said earlier, building out the infrastructure that can enable industrial electrification, support for clean electricity, including through a clean electricity standard, which will help ensure that as we electrify the industrial sector, we're doing it in a way that yields climate benefits funding for carbon capture utilization and sequestration, as well as clean hydrogen demonstration projects and ta new tax credits for industrial decarbonization technologies. And that's just a small set of a list of um, much, much more things that we're looking to do in the jobs plan. So the bottom line is that if you care about manufacturing, you should be thrilled about the American jobs plan. Um, and the administration is just extremely excited about industrial electrification. I think it's great that I'm in a job that's never existed before, which signals just how important we think this is um, and its role in building a strong, equitable, competitive and clean economy. And so we're really looking forward to working with all of our partners and stakeholders, including the Verge Electrify community as we move the ball forward. Jane, you have definitely gotten me more excited about industrial electrification, Yay. and I'm sure that it's true for our, our audience and our community as well. Um, I genuinely feel more hopeful about progress in this area, knowing that you are in this new leadership position. Um, Jane Flegel is the Senior Director for Industrial Emissions at the White House. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, Jane. Thank you so much for having me. Sarah, back over to you.